Valley Talk on News Talk 1580 KGAL. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to Real Estate Talk. I'm your host, Dave Pouch of Remax Integrity. We are live this beautiful Thursday morning from the Albany downtown studios of KGAL Show Radio at the home of Silver Falls Dermatology in the old library building. Uh, this is our Valley Talk Week, twice a month on the first and third Thursdays of every month. I have the chance to speak to this weekday Valley Talk audience, and I'm always excited to do that. Uh, I get Saturdays off every once in a while, and this Saturday I'll actually be teaching at the Willamette Neighborhood Housing Services class. Uh, so through the magic of radio, I get to be two places at once this Saturday. It'll be a rebroadcast. But if you're interested in information about the class, you really can get in touch with me right here, Real Estate Talk at kgal.com, and I will put you in touch with the people at Willamette Neighborhood Housing. So we just heard from the promo, and I don't know if it's going to run on Saturday, but uh, yesterday was National Talk Like a Pirate Day. So I have a pirate joke. So Jerry... What is a pirate's favorite pair of socks? I don't know, Dave. Tell me. Argyle. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, there's a follow-up. Given that line of reasoning, what is a pirate's favorite fast food restaurant? Well, that's another good one. Tell me. You'd think it would be Arby's, but it's not. It's Long John Silver. <laughs> Okay. So there's my salute to National Talk Like a Pirate Day. Today, as you just heard, my guest is Jerry Cuomo. And Jerry is the principal broker at REMAX Integrity, but she is also the current president of the Willamette Association of Realtors for at least just a little bit longer. Uh, and we're going to be talking with Jerry about Measure 79, what it is, what it means to you, and why it's just so incredibly important that you support this ballot measure when it comes up in November. And that discussion will be coming up uh, along with some listener questions in my next segment. Before we start in today's show, a reminder, Taste on Us at Quiznos is still going on. So if you, my friends, would like a $10 gift certificate to the Albany Quiznos, here's how you can get it. Just be the first person this hour to email dave at kgal.com. Uh, again, dave at kgal.com. Be the first. Get a $10 gift certificate to the Albany Quiznos. My suggestion, do it now. But we're going to jump into the show today. And uh, I'm going to start, as always, with the Real Estate Showcase. Now, at the beginning of this month... I started a promotion uh, for a couple of my listings, and, and I want to revisit that theme here again today, and I'm going to revisit it all month. Uh, if you're interested in buying a home, or if you know someone, someone who is interested in buying a home, could you or could they use an extra $1,000? an extra $1,000 in your pocket. Let me tell you how they can get it. Currently, I have four homes participating in this special promotion. The homes are located in Albany. One is in North Albany. Two are in Southwest Albany in the Spring Meadows neighborhood. One is in Southwest Albany near, South, uh, near West Albany High School. So if one of these homes, and they are in different categories, but if one of these homes is right for you, write an offer, get it accepted before the 30th of September this year. Then at closing, you will get a $1,000 credit from the seller. Now, you can use that toward closing costs, towards your down payment, as an allowance for carpeting or landscaping. You can use it to purchase a mortgage payment protection plan. Pretty much whatever you want within the guidelines that your lender and your loan program authorize. It's up to you. But folks, it's an extra thousand dollars. That's money coming from the seller. It's not coming out of your pocket at closing. That frees up your cash for important things like a new refrigerator or a dining room set, maybe mini blinds or landscaping. All four of these homes are very well-conditioned, well-priced homes located in nice, established neighborhoods. We're offering you an extra $1,000 just to get your offer in and accepted before the 30th of September. For a complete list of the homes that are participating in this special end-of-summer clearance, email me here at realestatetalk at kgal.com. But I can give you a summary. Two of the homes are five-bedroom homes. One is a four-bedroom home, and one is a three-bedroom home. Now, two of the homes are priced under the $200,000 price point. The remaining two homes are priced under $100 a square foot. 
Uh, and they're both in the middle $200,000 price range. So if you're already working with another real estate professional, that's fine. Have them contact me, and I am happy to share the details. So who couldn't use an extra $1,000? It's the foundation team at REMAX Integrity Summer Clearance Special. And that is my real estate showcase for this 20th day of September, 2012. If you want more information about the homes that are participating in our summer clearance or any home, uh, send me an email, realestatetalk at kgal.com. If you have a question, you can also get that in by email. And we're going to do some listener questions today. Again, realestatetalk at kgal.com. Or another really easy way for you to do this is to go to our Facebook fan page. A couple of ways you can get there. Just go to Facebook.com, log into your account, and type in the little search bar, Real Estate Talk. Or you can write the whole address. It's simple. Facebook.com backslash Real Estate Talk on KGAL. I love when you participate in the show. I think it makes Real Estate Talk more powerful. I think it makes it more... Uh, applicable and useful to our listening audience if it's your questions that we're answering on the air. And we are going to do some listener questions today, so always a great way to do that. Uh, quick advertisement. If you are not currently working with a real estate professional and you would like a market analysis done on a property, and, and it doesn't matter whether you're looking to buy that property or to sell that property, having a good market analysis gives you information which makes you more powerful in the real estate equation. So get the market analysis. And if you don't have anybody to help you with it, email me. Just send me an email with the address, realestatetalk at kgal.com. I will provide that market analysis to you at absolutely no obligation. But folks, honestly, I'm a part-time radio host. I'm a full-time real estate professional. And I would love to be on your team. And if you want an agent that's 100% on your side, that's my commitment to all my clients. I don't do dual agency. I only represent one client in a real estate negotiation. So give me a call. Send me an email today. Finally, for this segment, if you are just now starting that home buying process, I cannot encourage you enough to contact Willamette Neighborhood Housing and take the home buyer education class. It is worth it. It is eight hours of education. Uh, it's a long day. But it is absolutely worth it. It will help qualify you for potentially some different loan programs or down payment assistance programs that are out there. It's the education piece that checks that box off. But if nothing else, it makes you more powerful because you are going to be more knowledgeable as you go through the process. For my clients, the first time buyers that I work with, I pay for this class for them as my obligation to them as their agent. I'm going to offer the same thing to you for my faithful radio listeners, as long as you're not currently working with another realtor. If you already have a relationship with another real estate professional, ask them to pay for the class. It's a great idea. But if you're not, contact me. Sign up, take the class, email me at realestatetalk at kgal.com. Let me know the date that you've signed up for. And when you attend the class, I will reimburse you for the tuition for that $45 course fee. Uh, again, I just believe in the program that much. So please take me up on that offer. Okay. I'm Dave Pouch of REMAX Integrity. It's time to take a break. Uh, when we come back, Jerry Cuomo, principal broker of REMAX Integrity and president of the Willamette Association of Realtors and everything you wanted to know about Measure 79. This is Real Estate Talk on KGAL. Banking these days can be pretty impersonal. You've got your big banks, your internet banks, your do-it-yourself banks, and your too-big-to-fail banks. That's why you might be interested in an alternative. Willamette Community Bank. I'm Dave Wood president and CEO of Willamette Community Bank. We believe you deserve better service without sacrificing a thing. So if you're feeling underserved, make the switch to the best banking option out there. Willamette Community Bank, service like no other, we promise. Member FDIC. Halcyon Painting just wrapped up their major outdoor projects of the season and there's still some nice weather left. You can get your job done by the best. Call Halcyon Painting now for your no-obligation proposal. Halcyon provides a complete description of all work to be done in writing, together with a firm price. With Halcyon Painting, every job carries a written warranty. 752-7251. 752-7251. Halcyon Painting will prove it to you. What makes your paint job better? We do. Howdy. I'm not a propane professional, but I've played one on TV. In the uncertain times we face in America, I'm here to remind you what's important in life. Be a good neighbor. 
Have a firm handshake. Work hard. Enjoy a cold beverage with friends. Love your wife and the community you live in. Maintain a good lawn and take care of the environment by using the cleaner burning fuel, propane. Visit your only hometown locally owned and operated energy provider, Co Energy Propane, on Highway 99 South in Corvallis. Just look for my smiling face out by the road. There's a big blue building with a yellow awning. That's Co Energy Propane. They sell both propane and propane accessories. Co Energy Propane presents Golf for the Cure October 15th at the Corvallis Country Club in support of Susan G. Komen for the Cure. Sign up online right now at coenergyproprpaneforthecure.com. Keep your energy dollars working right here in the Willamette Valley with Co Energy Propane. We're kicking off the season with the best deals of the year. It's the built Ford Tough Truck event. Time to get the most for your money with Ford F-Series. Great power and amazing fuel economy means no compromises. And that's what you get in a truck built Ford Tough. Like Ford F-150. With a powerful and efficient EcoBoost engine, you get the power you want and the economy you need. Or Ford Super Duty with its amazing 6.7 liter power stroke turbo diesel. Super Duty's got everything you need to get the job done. And then some. So if you're looking for power, payload, towing, and economy, your local Ford store has got the truck that's right for you. And with built Ford Tough Truck Event deals, there's never been a better time to buy. We're talking big time savings on a huge selection of America's best selling trucks. If you're ready for a great deal on a new Ford F-150 or looking to get to work at a new Ford Super Duty, this is your chance to save. So don't miss the built Ford Tough Truck Event going on now at your local Ford store. Health Talk with Dr. Bob Martin, Sunday mornings on News Talk 1580, KGAL. Welcome back to Real Estate Talk. I'm your host, Dave Pouch of REMAX Integrity. Real Estate Talk is your only resource on local radio for real estate information right here in Oregon's Mid Willamette Valley. We are always here on Saturdays, uh, twice a month. We get to spend some time in this Thursday Valley Talk time slot. If you've missed a show or if you're looking for information about real estate market trends, you can go to the website, www.kgal.com, and click on the link for Real Estate Talk. There is an MP3 archive there for you, as well as a lot of real estate statistics going all the way back to January 2007 when we first launched this silly boat called Real Estate Talk. Uh, we're, I think we're missing some of the current shows. We're working on that. They're actually changing a lot about the, the KGAL webpage. So, so pay attention to that. But you can always get the statistics at the Facebook fan page. Today, my guest is uh, my boss, Jerry Cuomo. Jerry is the principal broker at REMAX Integrity. Uh, but Jerry is also the president of the Willamette Association of Realtors, at least for a little while. Jerry, your term's up here? November. November. So, uh, but you've been on the board for pretty much as long as I can remember and past president at least once before. Mm -hmm. So I thought Jerry would be a great spokesperson to come on and talk with us this morning about measure 79 but i don't know if a lot of you remember when i very first started this show back in january 2007 uh, i decided i was going to have a guest every show because i didn't think i could talk well enough to fill the entire hour every week and one of my very first guests uh, was jerry cuomo and we talked about the uh the earnest money agreement I think it was either the, the first or the second show that I did by myself. You were my guest. So it's been a long time to get you back here, but welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> so I've been driving around town, as I always do, and I actually have one of these signs in my front yard, but I'm seeing more signs pop up that say yes on Measure 79. Uh, now, a lot of my friends on Facebook are real estate professionals, and I'm seeing yes on 79 popping up on, on their Facebook pages. So... Can you explain to us really what is Measure 79? Measure 79 is actually a... It's, we're wanting to permanently stop, which would be a change in um, the Constitution, any form of real estate transfer tax. Right now, currently, every session that we have, uh, the legislature throws it out there and wants to put it property transfer tax when when any of our sellers were to sell a home. This would permanently change the Constitution and would not allow that option to the uh, legislature. So are there currently real estate transfer taxes in Oregon? We don't have what we would call a property transfer tax. There's a few pockets in Oregon that have city transfer taxes, 
I believe one of those is um, up in Washington County in the Portland metro area. They do have a 0.1% transfer tax on the sale of real property. Now, and other states do. Other states do. The state of Washington has one, and, and actually there is a, a, a testimonial from a resident who lives in Washington, and the sale of their property almost failed because their transfer tax was 1.78% uh, of the sale of their property. And that's wow. in the state of Washington. So I think this is, this is the, the example of how government kind of creeps. Once you give them a tax or the ability to do this, they, they take a little bit and it's not very painful, but then they take a little more or another arm of government takes it, right? That's kind of what we're worried about. Well, what we're worried about is if we can stop the, the state from implementing a transfer tax altogether, which is what Measure 79 would do, it would also stop the fact that once a transfer tax were imposed, then any county, as let's say Benton County or Lynn County, said, well, that's kind of a good idea. Let's, let's implement another 0.1% transfer tax. And then it could also trickle down into the cities, and they would start adding on. So, so you'd go very quickly from a 0.1% to 0 0.178 or 0.2. And if you're talking about 2% of a $200,000 real estate transaction, that's a lot of money. It is a lot of money, and it's, it has to be paid at closing. Yeah, there's actually a, a website. It's called Yes on 79. Uh, actually, that's not the right website. Oh, well. There, the there, there is a website. It actually has a calculator on it. Yes, there is a calculator on that website. It is uh, yes on measure 79.com. Oh, there it is. So if you had a $200,000 home purchase, 200000 one more zero there, uh, and the local transfer tax rate was 0.47 and the state transfer tax was 1.5%, so that's just about 2%, you're talking about $3,940 on your the transfer of your real estate. It's kind of like a sales tax. Exactly. So what are we doing about it? I mean, uh, it, this is a constitutional amendment. Why do we need it to be a constitutional amendment to do this? Well, by making it a constitutional, uh, by changing the constitution, it would permanently prohibit the real estate transfer tax and fees. Um, a yes vote, remember it has to be a yes vote, will prohibit that and change the constitution so that the local and state governments cannot implement this transfer tax. And I think it's important also to understand, Jerry, and correct me if I'm wrong, the, the current counties or, or municipalities that do have these already imposed before, I think it's 2009, December 31st, December 2009, 31. mm -hmm. it's not going to affect those. Right. And this is just to keep any new taxes from being added on to the transfer of real estate. Exactly. That's right. Okay. Now, again, and you kind of just alluded to it. I'm sure there's going to be some confusion because we are asking people to vote yes on Measure 79. Exactly. And the yes, if they think they're voting against a tax, the, the, uh, the natural uh, thing would be, I want to vote no. No on that tax. But you're voting yes to the constitutional amendment. Exactly, that's right. It um, would permanently amend the Constitution and uh, the current statutory laws that are in place. Um, and uh, other than those that you alluded to, December 31 of 2009. So here's the big thing. Again, I don't, I don't know that there's a lot of notoriety or a lot of awareness of this particular measure. Uh, I know there had to be a lot of petitions signed by people, and, and there was a big campaign over the last, what, two years, I think, to get this measure on the ballot. It has, we've been working on it as uh, state realtors for, like you said, Dave, the last two years. We were able to gather almost 200,000 signatures to get it on the ballot, and so... We're patting ourselves on the back for that. Yay. <laughs> yeah, yay. But again, I still don't know that there's a, enough awareness or a lot of awareness out there uh, beyond the real estate community. So hopefully being here, we can kind of start that discussion and getting people aware that it's out there, aware that they need to, to, to vote on it. And if you're listening to the show now, I think the natural question is, okay, I'm for this. What can I do? 
Well, we have yard signs that are available at most of the, your local real estate offices. You can pick up the yard sign that says yes on 79. I'm sure most people out there have their neighborhood friendly realtor they can talk to and go to that person and get more information on, on what it really means. And then again, go to the website. There's a, a lot of links on the website and questions and answers, and it's a good place to, to dig a little deeper. The only other question I think I'm left with at this point is obviously all of the publicity that I've seen is positive. It is yes on 79. Are there, are there any opposition groups out there? And, and if you're listening, if you happen to hear that, if you want to come on the air and provide your side of this particular argument, please contact me. I would love to get you on the air and, and talk about this particular I issue with you. But I'm not aware of any opposition to this. This is kind of an unopposed sort of a thing. We have not heard rumblings of any big opposition. I think the biggest hurdle is a lot of people have a problem with totally amending something in the Constitution. And that's been the only talk I've heard, it's the amending of the Constitution. Okay, so it is a big deal mm -hmm. uh, to, to do that as a constitutional amendment. If that's the only opposition to it, I don't know that anybody really wants to add that. And I think, again, for most of us, it's not necessarily that there is a tax. It is the worry that that tax will grow, that the state will levy one, uh, then the local municipality, the city, or the county will decide it's a good idea for them, and they will levy one. And what is not an onerous responsibility in and of itself when added up becomes a pretty hefty transfer. Well, exactly, as you did on your little calculator, just 2% of a $200,000 sale of a home adds up very quickly, and it's another burden on the sellers who, in our market, though it's improving, sellers are still struggling to, to get the few dollars out of there. Well, we're still doing short sales. We're still having, and, and, and there's the question, if you're talking about a tax, tax overrides tend to be higher in the lien structure than mortgages. Mm -hmm. So that's going to have a, a fairly big impact in our market today if you're dealing with a short sale on being able to get a transaction closed because the tax man takes their bite first. Exactly. Exactly. So it's crazy. Folks, if you want more information about Measure 79, talk to your, your favorite local realtor. Email me here at realestatetalk at kgal.com. Go to the website. And again, that website is yesonmeasure79.com. Any other things you want to wrap up about Measure 79, Jerry? Uh, you know, just that the real estate transfer tax, as Dave was talking about, is it, it would be another new another tax on your home in other words double taxation if you will if you want to look at it that way we all pay our our real estate our property taxes and that takes care of the schools and things like that this additional tax we're not even sure what fund that would go into well and we, when we were talking before the show you said that was it Washington County or some other, maybe it was Washington mm -hmm. State, somebody, they had a transfer tax that was originally designed to go to a specific purpose and now that money goes where? Washington County in the Portland metro area, they take a 0.1% tax on the sale of real property. And initially that tax was dedicated for transportation funding. Now it's just going into the general fund. And, and again, I, 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 love, I love to pay my taxes. I believe that paying taxes is what makes us a citizen in this country and gives us the rights and the, the infrastructure. And I support paying my taxes personally. But sometimes I, I want to pay my fair share and I don't want to pay everybody else's fair share. I don't want to pay everything I have in taxes mm -hmm. because you give that money to the tax man and they put it in the general fund and it just goes so many crazy places. So exactly. I guess yeah. that's enough political commentary out of me. <laughs> okay, Dave, I agree with that one. Yeah, we were talking about it before, no filter. <laughs> Sometimes I try really to stay apolitical here. Uh, an important issue, though, folks. I, I hope if you have questions, get them answered. I strongly urge you as an individual to support this particular measure, although please be aware that my view does not necessarily express the views of KGAL Show Radio. Anything else, Jerry, before we take a break? Just one short comment. I do have a testimonial from a young family out of Portland, and it says that they just bought their first home, and it was a real stretch for them to get into a very modest home. The additional tax would have probably put that house out of reach because the seller, of course, someone has to pay that tax, so the price would in, in turn go up, and they would not have been able to qualify for that. 
that house. So just think about that just from the first time home buyer perspective. Absolutely. Well, we're going to take a break, Jerry. Will you stay with me and help me answer some listener questions? Sure. Awesome. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, you're listening to Real Estate Talk on 1580 KGAL. I'm Dave Pouch of REMAX Integrity. We'll be right back. The Osgood File, sponsored in part by Auto Owners Insurance, the no problem people. Visit autoowners.com. This is Charles Osgood. Willow Tufano is too young to drive, only 15. But she has a certain amount of drive, says our CBS News colleague, Anna Werner. Willow Tufano may look like a typical teen, but growing up during Florida's foreclosure crisis gave her the opportunity to become something else, too. I bought my first house, and I'm buying my second house here soon. You're a landlord? Yes. Her story after this. In this moment, who has your back? Do you know the name of your insurance agent? Does your agent know your name? Or would you call a 1-800 number that connects you with who? Another state? Another country? Get a local, independent insurance agent with auto owner's insurance. Someone you can call when bad stuff happens to your car, home, or business. In this moment, get an agent who will protect you in that moment. Auto owner's insurance. The no problem people. In Albemarle, call Bayer Insurance Service at 704-982-1156. Every day, where do I see the independent spirit our country was founded on? In small business owners. We rely on them, and they rely on the UPS store. From packing and shipping to professional printing to mailbox services, small business owners get help from the UPS store. But perhaps the best thing they get is the feeling that they're not alone out there. And even for those with a strong independent streak, that's a rather reassuring feeling. We love small business. We love logistics. To find the location near you, visit the upsstore.com. Willow Tufano's mother is a Florida realtor in an area full of foreclosed-on homes the banks are selling or trying to. I would go around with my mom and look at these houses, and there was one that was filled with a whole bunch of furniture that was nice, and I said, I could sell this stuff, so that was how it started. Willow made $6,000 selling the furniture and used it to buy the $12,000 house she's now renting out, and she's about to close on another one for seventeen five. dollars they're also underpriced, she told Anna Warner. I'm trying to get as many houses as I can while the market is low. What's your goal? I want to have probably around 10 houses by the time that I'm 18. 10? Yes. I want to try for two a year, pretty much. She's been gathering and selling items from garage and curb sales. I just try and save every penny that I can to invest in more houses. As a minor, Willow can't legally be on the deed. But when she turns 18, her mother, Shannon Moore, will sign the properties over to her. I said, Willow, lead the way. Show me where you need to go. And she has. Not bad for a kid with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder who left a gifted school because teachers told her mom her daughter couldn't focus. I guess it's hard to listen to people say, your kid has a problem, and then now look at her. The Osgood File. Charles Osgood on the CBS Radio Network. Oh, there it goes. Hey, stop that pumpkin. Get ready to lace your sneakers and run away with the best of them. It's the second annual Runaway Pumpkin Half Marathon. On Saturday, October 27th, runners from all over the state will gather at Cheetah Lake Park in Lebanon for the start of this 13.1-mile track to benefit the ABC House. 100% of the proceeds will go directly to the ABC House to help serve abused children in the Mid Willamette Valley area. Walkers are welcome and have more than four hours to complete this beautiful country course. All participants receive an awesome tech shirt, cool finishers medal, a backpack full of goodies, great food, and a chance to win prizes. First place, male and female finishers get a $250 gift card to Lowe's. Come in costume and join the fun. If you cannot attend, sign up to be a virtual runner or volunteer. Registration is going on now. Visit runawaypumpkinhalf.org to register and learn more. Do it early and save. This event sponsored by United Healthcare, Lowe's Regional Distribution Center, and this radio station. Celebrate a synergy of music and dance with Eugene Ballet Company's popular rock ballet, Dark Side of the Moon. October 5th at the LaSalle Stewart Center on the campus of OSU. Light Rain, interpreting the youthful energy of the early 1980s, will also be performed. This program will sell out, so call 541-682-5000 or stop by Gracewinds Music in Corvallis, Sid Stevens Jewelers in Albany, or EugeneBallet.org for tickets to Dark Side of the Moon. Radio for the Mid Valley's Horse Lovers, The Horse Show with Rick Lamb, Sunday mornings at 9 on Smart Talk 1580. 
Welcome back to Real Estate Talk. I'm Dave Pouch of Remax Integrity. Uh, my guest today is Jerry Cuomo. Jerry is the principal broker at Remax Integrity. She is also the president of the Willamette Valley, the Willamette Association of Realtors. And we spent the first segment this morning talking with Jerry about Measure 79. But uh, since I was her ride here to the studio today, I conned her into helping me do some listener questions. So thank you for staying with us this morning, Jerry. You're welcome. So, so my first question comes from M in Albany. M writes... We have our house for sale, and our real estate agent just changed companies. I don't want to say from where to where, but she told us that her boss wouldn't let her take our listing with her to her new company. Now we have a new agent at the old company, and we don't know them. How does that happen, and what can we do? We want to work with who we want to work with. Interesting question. Do you see this happen much, Jerry? It does happen. and I mean, agents are always changing offices. It happens pretty regularly. Sure, sure. And most of the broker owners or managers of the companies will release those listings. But you do need to understand that the listing is the property of the, the firm that they're with. That's who the broker is. Most of the time, though, people list with who they like and who they're comfortable with. So the suggestion for M from Albany might be to have a conversation with the old company's broker and request the release of the listing. Because normally if, if the agent asks for it, the broker may say, hey, you know, it depends on what terms they're parting. If they're parting on maybe a little rough term, something wasn't quite right and maybe somebody got fired or left, the principal broker, that's income, that's revenue for the company. So they And they have a legal right to retain that listing. Exactly, they but, do. But the homeowner themselves, you're absolutely right, Emmy. You have the right to work with who you want to work with. Now, the one risk, as I understand it, Jerry, and correct me if I'm wrong, when you sign your listing agreement, it does have a provision in there uh, if you terminate early that you could potentially owe a commission or some part of it to the brokerage, right? Yes, that's right, unless it's fully terminated from the brokerage side. Now, again, most principal brokers, most broker owners, they want goodwill. They want a good reputation. So I'm sure if you go in M and talk nicely to them, you can probably make it work. Yeah, I believe yeah. so. Hopefully it wasn't you. It wasn't me. Because <laughs> we, as a policy, you don't do that, do no, you? No, no, I don't. Okay, my next question comes from B in Lebanon. And B writes, how does the negotiation process work when you're trying to buy a house? Does the agent actually negotiate on our behalf with the seller? Why can't we just sit down at a table with the seller and hash it out? That's an interesting question. So, does the agent actually negotiate on your behalf? Well, yes and no. I mean, we take your input. We sit and talk to you about what your strategy is, what you want to achieve, and we help you build that strategy. We're not making the decisions, though. You, as the buyer or the seller, are making the decisions. But That's right, Dave. So, why don't we just sit everybody down at a big table and just hash it out? Well, a lot of times there's just emotion involved. I mean, the buyer or the seller can say the wrong thing and upset the other party, and then your negotiations fall apart right then. We're there to facilitate the transaction, and, and ultimately both sides come out happy. You know, I, I've also seen where, because I have seen occasions where the buyer and the seller ended up in the same place, and they start talking. Uh, and I remember one specific case, uh, this was actually during a showing, the seller stayed in the house during the showing, I had the buyer, and the seller began telling us things about what their goals were, what they were doing next, and some other things that ultimately could have disadvantaged them in the negotiations. Exactly. And sometimes they get together and they make side deals that the realtors eventually find out about, such as they're going to leave certain pieces of property or, you know, personal property type things and negotiating on their own. Not so, a good idea. So really... Uh, be an answer to the question, yes, your agent negotiates on your behalf, but with you, I mean, you're, you're involved in that negotiation process and, and what's said, your agent should be working with you and making sure that everybody's on the same page. But the reason, the best reason that I can think of why we don't just put everybody at a big conference table is we want to make sure we're protecting your interests. And sometimes that requires some side conversations or a little bit of give and take or really crafting a good strategy to help you meet your target or your goal goals in that negotiation and doing it at the table where it becomes an emotional, potentially argumentative or really potentially disadvantageous situation for you where you're going to give something up that you didn't mean to just because it didn't, 
at the moment in time, in the emotion of the moment, you said something, say, sure, that's fine. And your agent just goes, oh, no, you didn't want to do that. So much better to have separate parties, have it paced out, have it uh, kind of process-oriented, wouldn't you say? Exactly. Take the emotion out of it. So, good question, though. Uh, next question comes from L in Tangent. L writes, our listing is coming up on its expiration date in about three weeks. We've decided that we would like to change agents and give someone else a try. It's not that the agent did anything wrong, but we think we may get better results with somebody else. Do we have to wait until it actually expires before we start talking to the other agent that we want? We don't want to lose time on the market because the weather is still nice. <laughs> okay, well, that makes good sense. So uh, the, the question is, do you have to wait? Can you start the, the conversation now with the other agent that you're thinking of hiring? As a seller, you can contact another agent of your choice and invite them to preview your property and maybe do an updated market analysis and get their marketing plan. You as the seller can invite that agent in. Yeah. Now, the, that agent, I can't, if, 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 I can't solicit your listing before it's expired. So I can't contact you and say, hey, you want to list your house? I see you have it listed with so-and-so down the street at this other company. You don't want to work with them. You want to work with me. Why don't you fire them? I can't do that. That's absolutely, totally unethical, unprofessional for me to do. But if you know me or you know this other agent and you say well we want to give them a try you can call them say come and talk to me that's perfectly legal they can talk with you uh can you actually sign the listing contract before the other ones expire jerry i don't think you should sign a, a new listing contract because then if you think about it you're in contract with two different people you need to wait until the other ones actually expired have everything ready to go but i don't know that i would get into a second contract but you could have it all prepared and ready to sign on the day, on the next day after. Yes. And that agent could take the photos and do everything they wanted to do. Yes. Any suggestions on how to deal with the first agent? Either maybe from the perspective of the seller. What's, you've got to have that conversation with the agent that you've got that you're letting go. Uh, also from the perspective maybe of the agent... Do you have, do I as an agent have any responsibilities to that other agent to contact them and let them know, hey, I'm taking your listing over? I think from the seller's perspective, if they're going to be not renewing their listing with their original broker, they need to have that conversation and say, nothing against you. I just want a fresh, fresh eyes, that type of thing. It's not you. It's not it's you. Me. That's right. It, we're breaking up. That's it. And you need, and as a seller, they need to have that conversation as the new listing broker, uh, you want to make sure that maybe you're asking the seller, you, you know, what, what their needs are and, and why are they not going to use this other person because we're in a small community. It's kind of nice to work with each other. And so you don't want to alienate yourself from another agent. And, and the only other thing that I would add here is maybe go back and revisit. It said... You said in your question, it's not like the agent did anything wrong, but we think we may get better results with somebody else. Uh, so I would maybe have a conversation with the agent that you've got about why you're not getting the results that you think you should get, what they could be doing better. Ultimately, even if you let them go, that may help them. That may help them in their business, in their career, and it's the nice thing to do. To the other side of that, though, if the issue, your agent comes back to you and said, look, I've done this, 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 and this. I've exposed your house on, on these 42 different websites. I've you know, spent $400 in, in signage and, and realtor tour luncheons and all this other stuff. And the whole issue is you're $40,000 overpriced. You know, maybe that new agent's not going to be able to help you either. Remember, it's, it's a team effort. You need to listen to the professional, the, the real estate broker, and use the guidance of that person on where your house needs to be priced or does it need to be cleaned up? Uh, do you need to freshen up the paint a little bit in a few rooms? Have because Margaret come in and stay. Exactly. If you're not listening to the professional, then maybe it's not that broker's 
fault that it hasn't sold. Right. Now, certainly sometimes there are personality conflicts and not everybody can work together effectively. You certainly, I know, as a principal broker, have to deal with that on a, on, on a fairly regular basis, dealing with agents and their clients and people not being happy. But a lot of that would be short-circuited with a very professional conversation between the two. Exactly. It? It's all about the communication in, in everything we do. Okay. So the last question I have before we end uh, this particular segment, Jerry, this is a great question. I'm so glad you're here for this today. Uh, this comes from T in Albany. Uh, T writes, Dave, do you have any advice for someone who is thinking about getting into real estate? It seems like the market is picking up from listening to your show. Is now a good time for somebody to get their license? Thanks for a great show. I've answered this question before, but obviously the market's always changing, so this question comes back. So, Jerry, I'm going to ask for your perspective on this particular question. Well, it's interesting, Dave, because in the last six months or so, there's been a, quite a number of brand new licensees, as we like to call them. And I think my only caution to that is, as the market changes and it's constantly changing, our jobs get more difficult, and you need to treat it as a job. You, it's it's a every day of the week career that you're that you're doing, and you're trying to develop your career. So it's not just going out and looking at houses and saying, "Oh, that's really cool." There's a lot more to the puzzle, and it's hard work, and it's time consuming. Hours are flexible, but sometimes it's seven days a week for a long period of time. Hours are flexible, and so are your paychecks. Exactly. Because they do not come on a regular basis. It, it's interesting. I had a conversation with another agent in our office just the other day, uh, and we were kind of talking about kind of a side effect of this. and Not that it's now a good time to get in, but yes, the market has changed, but it hasn't gotten easier. In some ways, it's gotten harder as agents. And the, I think the biggest mistake that we make as real estate professionals is that we don't always relate to our clients all of the problems that we've solved, all of the things that we've done, all of the work that we're putting in. It's, it's not a very good, you know, it's not that we're complaining about having done it, but educating them about all that we're doing for them to earn the commission that we're taking. There's a lot of work behind the scenes, like you said, that most of our clients don't don't see that we do. And that's that's the thing, getting it from the original deal, the listing, and then you get an offer and then getting it to closing so that that seller can have the cash or the buyer can have the keys so they can move in. And sometimes it's a lot of phone calls. It's a lot of haggling. It's a lot of um, waiting on other people to do their jobs. Exactly. And, and coordinating, putting pieces in place and putting out fires and, and dealing with crisis. But if we're not communicating that to our clients, they think, oh, well, their job is just so easy. They just go out and look at houses all the time. Yeah, except sometimes you don't want to worry your clients either. So you just take care of it and try to get the issues resolved before you have to exactly. talk to them. So, so T, I guess the best answer is, is now a good time to get a real estate license? Ultimately, I think the answer is any time is a good time to get a real estate license as long as you're going in with your eyes open. Know what you're getting yourself into that this is, it's, it's much more than a job. It is really a lifestyle. It is, it's a lot of work. It's, it's not a lot of confidence in when the next commission check is coming, at least in the early part of your real estate career. It's mostly outgo instead of income. Uh, you're building a, a client base. If you're willing to face it as a professional, go to work every day, and you have the necessary skill sets that you need to run a successful business, I think any time's a good time to get into the market. Certainly, the market itself, uh, the, the number of transactions that are taking place, and I listened to Margaret Kelly uh, talk on uh, the Fox Business the other day about the state of the market, and she has changed her view from cautiously optimistic at the convention back at the beginning of the year to optimistic, where we're past the bottom, or we're you know we're we're on the upswing. Things are getting better. It's a great time for real estate. Is it a great time for you to get in the market? I don't know. One quick question: We got about two minutes before we have to take a break. If this person gets their real estate license, they're going to have to decide what company to go work for, where to hang their license. Can you maybe give uh, T some tips on things, questions they should ask when interviewing at real estate companies? And I do think you need to interview at most all the companies because they all have something different to offer 
different personalities. I think it's important that you, the personalities match with whoever is going to be your managing principal broker. I know in our company, I am not a competing broker, so I'm there for my agents all the time. Some companies have competing managing brokers. So and by that you mean that the, the, the managing broker also works with clients to buy and sell real exactly. estate. Exactly. So they're not necessarily available to you as they should, as in my opinion, as they should be. Right. So, but it is important to do the interviewing and asking about how, what education they have, what new licensee training they have, because that's, that's important. What mentoring there is. Exactly. Yeah, a lot of times when people ask me, I say, go to work for a, a, a currently busy agent. Help them work underneath their, not necessarily their license, but you know, with their mentorship until you can get started on your own. They'll feed you leads. You'll be able to help them get their job done better, serve their clients, and you'll learn a lot. Mm-hmm. So. Exactly. Great. Well, Jerry, again, uh, from one of my first guests to, to here uh, five and a half years later, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Dave. My pleasure. And remember, yes on Measure 79. Okay, folks, we're going to take our last break. When we come back, it'll be time for today's Real Estate Market Update. This is Real Estate Talk on KGO. Join your friends and family in the Seroptimus Walk for the Cause. Run for a Life event funds raised help provide detection, treatment, and support services for breast cancer and other diseases affecting women. Register today as an individual walker or runner or as part of a team. Sponsored by Samaritan Cancer Program, ATI Pacific Cast Technologies, Bassard & Sons Custom Canvas Works, and Flakeboard. This is Ryan the Lion with KGAL and KSHO. We're proud to sponsor the 2012 Seroptimus Walk for a Cause Run for a Life. Join us for a live remote broadcast from the big event, Saturday, October over six. Jay Farner here from Quicken Loans. We've got a program with an interest rate that's dramatically lower than the current rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage. It's called our 7-1 Adjustable Rate Mortgage. The rate today on a 7-1 arm is an amazing 2.625%, APR 2.94%. This incredibly low rate is locked until the year 2019. After that, it may adjust once per year. Call us today at 800-QUICKEN. We'll help you keep more of that hard-earned money in your pocket where it belongs. Maybe that's why for the second year in a row now, J.D. Power & Associates rank Quicken Loans highest in customer satisfaction for primary mortgage origination in the nation. I believe there's never been a more perfect time to refinance or purchase than right now. Again, the rate today on a 7-1 arm is an amazing 2.625%, APR 2.94%. So give us a call today at 800-QUICKEN. That's 800-QUICKEN. Or visit us at quickenloans.com. For J.D. Power & Associates award information, visit jdpower.com. Adjustable rate subject to change. Call us for cost information. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states, NMLS number 3030. Find yourself in the Old West at Kirk's Ferry Trading Post Restaurant and Bar in Brownsville. You are invited to check out their taste of home with a rustic Americana menu. Cooked by the wood fire oven, you'll find sports on a large screen and a full bar to wet your whistle. Along with Alexander Kirk's 1846 cabin inside to add to the historical ambiance. Open Thursday through Sunday, head to Brownsville and find Kirk's right there on Highway 228. Call 541-466-5614 or visit kirksferry.com. It's time to get ready, Albany. If a natural disaster hits our area, we want you and your family to be prepared. Join us Saturday, September 29th for an event that will help you get ready. Northwest Natural will be joined by the American Red Cross, Albany Police and Fire Departments, Lynn County Medical Reserve Corps, and Community Emergency Response Team, Oregon Local Emergency Planning Communities, and Oregon Freeze Dry to give away safety items and a free lunch. The first 100 families will also receive a free Red Cross emergency kit. It's all taking place on Saturday, September 29th from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. at Eleanor Hackleman Park. Join Northwest Natural and your neighbors to get ready, Albany. Albany Dairy, a chamber of commerce, helping your business grow. During these challenging times, buying local is more important than ever. Visit over 100 local businesses in one afternoon at the Albany Business Extravaganza, Wednesday, September 26th at the Lynn County Fair and Expo Center. Discover local businesses, their latest products and services, make connections, and sample free cuisine. The Albany Business Extravaganza is presented by the Albany Area Chamber of Commerce. Doors open at 1 p.m. Beyond the Beltway with Bruce Dumont, Sunday afternoons on News Talk 1580, KGAL. 
Welcome back to Real Estate Talk. I'm your host, Dave Pouch of REMAX Integrity. We're going to finish the show today, as always, with the real estate market update. We'll begin in Corvallis, where inventory is down slightly from our previous report. Today, 165 active residential listings. The average asking price, $363,896. 158 homes have sold in the past 90 days. That's even with last week. There's currently an incredible 2.87 months of inventory across the board in Corvallis. The median sold price in Corvallis over the past 90 days is steady. Today at $259,500, averaging $152.39 per square foot. On average, homes are spending 116 days on the market from listing to close of sale. So remember, if you take the typical uh, financed transaction, that's about 45 days right now uh, from offer to closing. So... If you're spending more than about 70 days on the market in Corvallis and you don't have an offer, something's crazy wrong because the market is really moving over there. In Lebanon, 86 homes are available for sale today. That's even with last week. The median asking price is up slightly at $136,500. Over the last three months, 47 homes have sold in Lebanon, dead even with last week. Today, 120000 is the median sold price. At $87.69 per square foot, homes spend an average of 133 days on the market from listing to close. Currently, 5.49 months of inventory is available. Finally, to Albany, where inventory is flat with 288 active residential listings. The average asking price is down slightly at $193,487. 159 homes have sold over the last 90 days. That is up from our last report. And the median sale price is also up today at $162,200. Homes are spending an average of 123 days on the market from listing to close. The average dollar per square foot value is up slightly at $108.92. And there is currently 5.43 months of inventory available. So a couple of quick notes about the market update as I presented it to you. First of all, that reminder that I like to provide every once in a while, the statistics that I'm giving you are big, broad brush numbers. They are not in any sense numbers that you should be making real estate decisions with. Uh, to do that, you'd be crazy because these are averages and medians and they take the entire residential market into account, but they don't look at gee, this home has granite countertops and it's on 0.3 acres and this home is on a 0.0 acre lot and it is absolutely in terrible condition. It doesn't account for that. These are big brush numbers to give you ideas of the trends within the market. Secondly, remember that six months of inventory is kind of the neutral number. Less than six months of inventory, we are leaning towards a seller's market. Interestingly enough, all three of our cities here in the Mid-Valley are in a seller's market. Corvallis, dramatically so. Uh, but even Albany and Lebanon leaning toward the seller side. However, as I explained a couple of weeks ago, we're not seeing any significant changes in the prices. Prices are creeping up ever so slowly uh, and only in certain categories. And the reason for that has mostly to do with appraisals, a need for maybe some more cash sales to close to create comparable sales. Uh, appraisers are still viewing it as a uh, declining to maybe a flat market. So we're not seeing a lot of increase in prices as of yet. But that is surely coming. Interest rates are remaining low. Buyers are still coming into the market. Uh, it, it remains to be seen what the seasonality is going to uh, take place as we get here into the fall uh, buying and selling of real estate season. So uh, stay in touch with the statistics, and you can do that on the Facebook fan page here at Real Estate Talk. At the top of the show, I was talking about the end of summer clearance sale. I have four homes uh, offering an additional $1,000 credit to you at closing. If you could use an extra $1,000 and one of these homes is right for you, just let's get an offer accepted before the 30th of September, and that's $1,000 in your pocket. We're happy to help. That's the foundation team end of summer clearance sale right here uh, on the foundation team at REMAX Integrity, and that's me. Final reminder, if you're thinking about buying a home, the Willamette Neighborhood Housing Services does a great job making sure that you as a buyer are educated about what you're going to face. If you're interested in taking that class, it's www.w-nhs.org. Take the class, and if you're a listener of Real Estate Talk and you're not working with another agent, email me at realestatetalk at kgal.com, and I will pay for that course 
for you. If you have a question or an idea for the show, send it in. You'll find us every Saturday morning right here talking real estate. I'm Dave Pouch of Remax Integrity. We'll see you next week right here on Real Estate Talk, 1580 KGAL, Lebanon, Albany, and Corvallis. Your first choice in local news, sports, and smart talk. This is News Talk 1580 KGAL, Lebanon, Albany, Corvallis.